In October 2017, Japanese authorities received a tip off from a missing woman's brother. He had hacked into his sister's Twitter account to find answers about where she could have gone and who she had been communicating with. He brought this information to the police, who then asked a woman to be used as bait to meet with a man whom the missing woman was talking to. On October 30th, the woman agreed to meet with the man as police watched and followed the mystery man back to his apartment. The next day, on Halloween, officers knocked at the man's door, asking about Aiko Tamura's whereabouts. Takahiro Shireshi calmly stated she was currently in the freezer. Searching the house, authorities were not expecting to discover a gruesome scene. Nine deceased bodies, all of which had been dismembered. Welcome to another episode of Crimson Sin with Tamsin Lee. I am your host, Tamsin Lee. Full show notes and sources can be found in the description. In recent years, the world has been shocked and horrified by numerous cases of serial killers who have taken advantage of social media platforms to lure victims into their clutches. One such individual is Takahiro Sureshi, known as the Twitter Killer, who gained notoriety for his heinous crimes in Japan. Takahiro Shireshi was born on October 9th, 1990, in Machita City, Tokyo. When he was around four years old, he moved to a house in Zama City with his father, mother, and younger sister. By all accounts, he had a somewhat normal childhood. But there were signs many missed that would foretell his future crimes. As a child, Takahiro was described as a quiet and inconspicuous person. His school friends stated that Takahiro would indulge in choking games with them, choking each other to the point of passing out. Takahiro graduated from high school in Yokohama, Kanagawa Prefecture, and got a job at a supermarket. He worked full-time at this store for two years before quitting. There were not any notable problems in this position, and he simply claimed personal reasons for why he quit in October 2011. Takahiro would go on to work at a pachinko parlor in Ebina City. For those who do not know what pachinko is, it is a mechanical game used as an arcade game and more frequently for gambling. It is comparable to a slot machine as a form of low stakes and low strategy gambling. He would also hold multiple jobs within Kanagawa Prefecture. He would then start working at an employment agency in Kabukicho, Shinjuku-ku, Tokyo, one of Japan's biggest red light districts dispatching women to sex shops. On February 6, 2017, Takahiro was arrested on suspicion of violating the Employment Security Act as he was offering employment for hazardous work, and he was indicted the same month. He was released on bail the following month, living with his parents and working a part-time job at a warehouse company. This is when Takahiro had two thoughts. I want to leave my father as soon as possible. And I want to become a woman's pimp. From his experience as a scout, he believed that suicidal people were the easiest to follow. On March 15th, Takahiro opened a Twitter account posting false tweets such as, I want to commit suicide, and interacting with women who had suicidal thoughts. 
rates. Japan is known to have a very high suicide rate. He also started learning more about suicide. For the crime he was arrested for in February, Takahiro was sentenced by the Mito District Court on May 29th to one year and two months in prison, which was suspended. Not long after this, he quit his part-time job and hardly worked. He began communicating with 21-year-old Mizuki Miura through Twitter on August 8th luring the woman in with an invitation to die with me. The first time Takahiro and Mizuki met was on August 13th, when more people were becoming interested in his story of assisted suicide. It is believed that they had some kind of consultation after that. On the 18th, Takahiro and Mizuki inspected a room in a two-story apartment facing the Otaku Odawara line tracks in Zama City. The following day, he visited a real estate company with Mizuki and proceeded with the contract procedures. Takahiro invited Mizuki under false pretense as he had no intention of taking his own life with her. As he gathered tools to dismember bodies, such as a saw, he also used his smartphone to search how to dismember a corpse. He reportedly received 510,000 yen, which is approximately $4,400, from Mizuki for renting the room. On August 22, 2017, Takahiro moved into the apartment. That very day, Mizuki was reported missing. After her family received a text stating she would return home after work and never did. According to a report, in order to avoid repaying the money he borrowed from Mizuki to cover the cost of moving into the apartment, he decided she needed to die. Which sounds strange that he would feel the need to pay her back when they basically had a side pact, but we'll get more into that later. Takahiro invited Mizuki to the apartment, giving her sleeping pills and alcohol. He sexually assaulted her, using a rope to keep her in his apartment before strangling her to death, and then stealing tens of thousands of yen from her. Her cell phone was later found on August 25th in Fujisawa City. Takahiro later reported that he made new preparations for his crimes by purchasing cable ties, which he said were used to restrain the women and tie up boxes. Around August 28th, 2017, 15-year-old Kuriha Ishihara from Ora Town, Gunma Prefecture, went missing. Takahiro lured the girl to his apartment where he sexually assaulted the teenager, strangled her to death with a rope, and stole several thousand yen in cash. Around August 30th, 2017, 20-year-old Shogo Nishinaka from Yokosuka City, Kanagawa Prefecture, was strangled to death with a rope in Takahiro's apartment, and he stole several thousand yen from him. The motive for the murder was said to be because Takahiro feared that Shoko would find out that Mizuki had been murdered. Around September 16th, 2017, 19-year-old Hinako Sarashina from Tokorozawa City, Saitama Prefecture, was lured to Takahiro's apartment, where he sexually assaulted her before strangling her to death with a rope and stealing several hundred yen in cash. Around September 24, 2017, 26-year-old Hitomi Fujima from Kasukabe City, Saitama Prefecture was lured to Takahiro's apartment under the pretense of finding a job. 
Instead, he sexually assaulted her, strangled her, killed her, and stole several thousand yen from her. Around September 28, 2017, 17-year-old Akari Suda from Fukushima City went to Takahiro's apartment, where she met the same fate as his previous victims. 17-year-old Natsumi Kubo from Saitama City, Saitama Prefecture, disappeared around September 30th, 2017, after being invited to Takahiro's apartment. 25-year-old Kazumi Maruyama from Yokohama City met the same fate around October 18th, 2017. The Fukushima Prefectural Police investigated the mobile phone radio transmission records after receiving a search request from Akari Suda's family and found that on the afternoon of September 28th, Akari was in Zama City, Kanagawa Prefecture. In response to this information, the Fukushima Prefectural Police issued a formal search request to the Kanagawa Prefectural Police, and the Prefectural Police's Zama Police Station sent four officers to search the area for three hours. The Saitama Prefectural Police made a similar request to the Kanagawa Prefectural Police to search for Natsumi. Similar to what the Fukushima Police had done, the last transmission point was recorded at Midori Gaoka on September 30th. At this point, Kanagawa Prefectural Police linked Akari Suda and Natsumi Kubo's missing cases together and suspected that it was some sort of mass died. Investigators expanded the search area to places where suicides were more commonly known to occur and into the mountains. But the search requests from Fukushima and Saitama were not urgent requests and were not of immediate importance. The last victim, 23-year-old Aiko Tamura from Hachiochi City, Tokyo, disappeared after a colleague from her work visited her home on October 21st. On October 23rd, it was reported that Aiko and Takahiro were photographed together on security cameras at JR Hachioji Station and Sobudaime Station on the Otakyo Otawara line, which is close to the apartment he rented. But Aiko would prove to be Takahiro's downfall after sexually assaulting, killing, and stealing her money. Aiko's brother submitted a search report to the Takao police station on the 24th after hacking into his sister's Twitter account. The police department had already started an investigation into the numerous missing person cases that accumulated in this area. A woman then acted as a decoy with the assistance of officers on October 30th, 2017 when she invited Takahiro to meet at the JR Machita station. Here, she informed Takahiro that she could no longer go with him, and investigators followed him to his apartment, where they found a strange odor permeating from the apartment. Officers would also discover numerous coolers containing body parts. Takahiro was arrested on October 31st on suspicion of abandoning a corpse. In the apartment, authorities found eight boxes, including three coolers and four large storage boxes. Seven of these boxes contained dismembered body parts. The bodies discovered included the heads of nine people and approximately 240 other bones. They also discovered multiple cash cards in the victims' names, women's shoes, and bags, as well as the tools used to dismember the bodies. During the interrogation, Takahiro stated, None of them really thought about dying, and that 
There was no resistance when he strangled Aiko. After killing his victims, Takahiro would dismember their bodies in the bathtub. He would then place parts of the body, except the head, in sealed containers and removed it from the apartment, disposing of them into garbage dumps. It is believed the reason why Takahiro kept the instruments he used to dissect the bodies was because he was unable to throw them away for fear that his crimes would be discovered. He also claimed the reason he kept the victims' heads and bones in cooler boxes was because he was afraid the head would be discovered by other residents and planned on burying them at a later date. He also confirmed to authorities that one of the boxes was empty because he had prepared a box for each crime. This empty box was for his 10th victim. During the autopsies conducted, two of the bodies found in the box had been dead for one to two weeks. The remaining seven had been dead for one to several months, and two of the nine bodies appeared to have been strangled. The state in which the victims were found made it difficult for authorities to determine their identities. Aiko Tamura's identity was confirmed on November 6, 2017. By November 9th, the bodies of the remaining eight victims had been identified using DNA testing with the help of their families. In addition to the DNA testing, investigators also used the victim's ID cards found in Takahiro's apartment to identify them. All of the victims were determined to be between the ages of 15 and 26 years old from Tokyo and four prefectures. Takahiro Shireshi was rearrested by the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department's Takao Police Station investigation headquarters on nine murder charges and nine destruction and abandonment of corpses charges. On April 2, 2018, the Tokyo District Public Prosecutor's offices requested and received permission from the Tokyo District Court to detain Takahiro for evaluation. The next day, he was transferred from custody at the Metropolitan Police Department's Tachikawa Police Station to the Metropolitan Police Department's Headquarters Building. From April 3rd to September 3rd, 2018, Takahiro remained here while a psychiatric evaluation was conducted by an expert and found him to be criminally responsible. He was then indicted for all nine victims with charges including murder, robbery, and forced sexual intercourse. After being indicted, Takahiro was able to meet with a number of media outlets. On September 11th, 2018, he met with an NHK reporter because, as he stated, there seemed to be money available. However, NHK refused his request for money, so he did not discuss the motive behind his crimes. Then on September 14th, he asked a GG press reporter for 30,000 yen he could deposit at a time to satisfy his appetite. And on September 18th, he asked Asahi Shimbun reporter Yosuke Takashima to provide food expenses in exchange for an interview. Both reporters refused to offer money to Takahiro. Due to how many victims were in the case, the amount of evidence against the defendant was enormous and took a considerable amount of time from the indictment to the first trial. Pre-trial proceedings started in April 2019, and the first trial was held on September 30th, 2020. At this trial, Takahiro Shireshi admitted to the charges against him. His defense attorney stated that the crime of voluntary murder was established between the defendant and victims, stating that there was an agreement and consent between them. 
Regarding the defendant's ability to take responsibility, the prosecutor asserted in his opening statement, Takahiro has consistently acted in a purposeful manner. It has no mental disorder and is criminally responsible. The defense attorney countered, Takahiro is suspected of having some sort of mental disorder and is suspected of being either mentally incapacitated or mentally impaired. The case was so enormous that the court deemed it necessary to divide the victims into three groups to reduce the burden on the jurors and sort out the points at issue. Each of these three groups were given opening statements and interim arguments. On October 5th, 2020, the second trial started regarding the first three victims who were murdered in August 2017. The prosecution argued that each of the victims were murdered despite the defendant expressing their will to live. At the third trial, the prosecutor said the female victim in the first case wanted to die when she first started communicating with the defendant. But the defendant encouraged her to die, and in that she showed her will to live. At the fourth trial, Takahiro answered the prosecutor's questions by stating, In none of the cases did the victims consent to the killing, and I thought I would invite a woman in, rape her, and steal her money. Things went according to plan in the first incident, so I was confident to carry out the crime from then on. During the sixth and seventh days of trial, Takahiro stated there was no consent from the victim to the killing. The court proceedings remained this way where the defense continued to argue that the victims consented to being killed. Even though Takahiro blatantly stated each time that he did not obtain their consent to kill them, on November 26th, the prosecutor made an argument regarding the entire incident, stating that Takahiro was fully responsible for the murder of his victims and demanded for the death penalty because of the seriousness of Takahiro Shireshi's crimes. On December 15th, 2020, Judge Nakuni Yano sentenced Takahiro to death. Takahiro expressed that he had no intention of appealing his sentence. However, his defense attorney appealed the sentence and filed a lawsuit at the Tokyo High Court on December 18th. Takahiro withdrew this appeal on the 21st, and the death penalty was confirmed on January 5th, 2021. Twitter is involved in both the method used by Takahiro to lure the victim and the provision of information that led to his arrest. He later stated that Nizuki was the first woman he was able to seduce. He actively sought out and communicated with suicidal people while offering advice. Takahiro contacted suicidal applicants on Twitter while claiming to assist in the suicide. He would advise his patients not to contact family, friends, or social media before committing suicide. After killing his victims, he used multiple accounts to pose as a new suicide applicant and lure the next victim. After Takahiro's arrest, the Japanese Twitter platform added a new item to its operating rules on November 7th, 2017, stating that Posts suggesting promoting or inciting suicide or self-harm is prohibited. If these posts are discovered and in violation with this new policy, the company would take measures such as deleting the tweet and freezing the user's account. The Minister of Health at the time, Katsunobu Kato, mentioned this case at a press conference after a cabinet meeting and stated that the internet was the trigger. Three days later, on November 10th, 2017, the chief cabinet secretary at the time, Yoshihide Suga, held a meeting to strengthen measures to prevent the recurrence of crimes using social media. Takahiro Shureshi is currently still incarcerated and awaiting his death 
sentence. What did you think of today's case? Do you think justice was served? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for listening and your support. Stay safe and I will see you for the next episode. Bye.